Well, it's typical. It's a Saturday and I've got the availability to do a bit of fishing and maybe make a video. And it's absolutely blowing a hoolie. Kayak fishing, don't even think about it. And I've been down to the beach today to maybe do a bit of beach fishing for bass. And it's absolutely caked with weed. It's been blowing a hooli all night. It's caked in weed, so just forget it. So to me, the next best thing about actually fishing is thinking about it. So I'm going to take this opportunity, keep myself occupied and get into the fishing shed and talk about a rig that I use, an anti-tangle float fishing rig that I, that I find really, really good. relaxing, chilled out way of targeting a variety of species. Just watching that float drift and bob along the surface and then the excitement when you get a take and you see that float go under. Now this is the standard sea float fishing setup or it's certainly the setup that we use in the UK. So we've got our leader coming down from the rod tip and joined to that is a sliding stop so you can adjust the depth. In this case it's just a standard sliding stop knot and that's followed by a bead, which is followed by your sliding float, then a suitable size weight so the float cocks correctly, followed by another bead, and that bead is there to protect the knot of the, on the swivel of your trace, then the swivel, and then the trace to your hook. But I wonder how many of you that also like to do a bit of float fishing, maybe from the harbour wall, or maybe off the rocks, or from the beaches targeting species such as mackerel and garfish have had this happen. You cast your float out, particularly if you need to put a bit of force into the cast. You cast it out, it hits the surface and then you see this. Your hook and your bait trap tangled on the top of the float. Or maybe the float sitting like that not being able to cock correctly because it's all in a tangle. When it happens it's really frustrating. Now you can give the rod a couple of tugs and sometimes that untangles it, but more often than not you need to reel the whole rod in, untangle it, cast it out and hope that it hits the surface and all sinks down below with no tangles. But there, there is an adjustment, an addition to this standard rig that prevents that and what it does it prevents the hook and the bait being able to reach the top of the float. So we'll have a look at that addition now. And this is that addition. I've got about 18 inches of line there with the swivel tied both ends and then running on that line I've got the weight and either side of the weight is a bead and the beads are there to help prevent damage to the knots of the swivel. But also the line is heavier. This is 30 pound line which is much heavier than the other rig line. And that helps to cut down on abrasion with this lead moving up and down the line. But where this goes, instead of having the weight just under the float there, you take away, take away that weight but keep the bead. So we'll have our sliding float and then that will be followed by the bead. And the next thing that would be tied on is this, this 18 inches of line which carries the weight. And then to the other end, we tie our trace to our hook. So I'm going to put that together now and then I'll explain a little bit more of how this works and how it prevents tangles on the top of the float. I've got the 18 inches of thicker line that carries the weight tied onto the rig now. So looking at the rig now, we've got our leader coming down from the rod tip. 
we've got our sliding stop, we've got our bead, and that's followed by the float. And so, so far, everything is the same as the standard rig. But we've done away with the, the lead that used to sit just under the float there. But still got the bead, and then tied on the 18 inches of thicker line, that which has got the swivel each end, which carries the weight. So the weight sits much, much lower below the float. The last thing to do to complete this rig is tie on the trace. And the length of the trace is really important. It must be set at a length that when it folds back like that, it cannot reach above the top of the float. So it's got to be set where it may be folding it back, it sits just below the top of the float, or maybe in the middle, or maybe in the lower half. That doesn't matter, but as long as it's not too long where it can fold back and then get above the float. Now that, with the, the weight sitting much lower away from the float, and this set at a length where it cannot reach the top of the float, is what makes this an anti-tangle rig. So I'll put the trace on now and then explain how this, this works as an anti-tangle rig when you cast it out. I've got the trace tied on now and like I mentioned earlier I've set it, set it at a length where when it come, folds back like that it cannot reach above the top of the float and that's what that is really really important. So to explain how this works when you cast it out the lead being, being heavier will go forward in the air first. Everything else will go backwards. The float will slide up the line and this, your trace will come backwards and probably flap around a bit. But when it hits the surface and all comes together, and that's normally the time when you get the tangle, as long as you set this at a length where it cannot reach above the top of the float, it will not tangle. Now I've used this, this setup now when I'm, when I'm fishing with this type of float for a long, long time now, and very, very rarely get a tangle, even when I'm having to put a real real force into a cast. It doesn't tangle. Now I'm not saying you'll never ever get a tangle because there might be something else that causes a tangle but I promise you it will cut, cut right down. So for those of you that do a lot of float fishing with this type of setup, the standard setup, and recognize this problem, give this a, give this a go. You can, just, you can make this little bit up separately and just keep it in your tackle box and then, then it's there to use over and over again. Give it a go and I promise it will cut down on those tangles. But just one thing to say, this is not my invention. I don't know who invented it, but the, I got the idea from the Cornish angler called Ed Shalifke. And what a great idea it is and it really does work. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.